Monday. So great. Let's talk about yens then. So like I said, Japan's finance minister last night closely monitoring um, FX moves. It's, it really creates a bad smell, all of this, um, because what they're basically saying, and as you can see reflected in the market, is they don't want this. They really don't. So there is this short side bias that remains here. Now, from a technical perspective, you know, that is coming across the wires from the Bank of Japan because, you know, there's a reason why you fell from this area before. There's a reason why the dollar yen saw rejection there. And it's the same reason why the finance minister is, is going along the same lines. Okay. It's because this is a preferred area for shorts. This isn't where people, uh, you know, traders, investors, the Bank of Japan, this isn't where anyone wants it higher. Nobody wants that. The only thing sustaining this is the slight recent risk off rhetoric, uh, hawkish view with the Fed and the fact that the rates are still higher and being maintained higher in the US. Okay. Now, if it becomes a case that PCE today causes the dollar to go even further on hawkish views, depending on the data, you might find Japan says, no, I don't want that. And they slam down and they buy all the yens they can. Um, so I would re I really don't see a long case for this whatsoever. It's just not there. Uh, you should absolutely not be buying this unless you want to get roasted. Um, it might go higher and it might be the case that their intervention does nothing, does absolutely nothing. Sometimes that does happen and it's happened many times before. They try and subdue the price and it doesn't work. OK. So just be wary of that. You know, traders will see this as a safe haven, uh, or more so for the dollar than the yen, if that PC is worrying. That's likely uh, because of the hawkish view. Um, if it's absolutely tremendously awful, the PCE, then it might be the other way that that yens get favoured. But nonetheless, you are at a key level of resistance. You're simply so high up that the value, should you hit long or short, is absolutely with the short side because you're 100 percent of the previous high and the previous high was the most value at, the, at this current point within the last Oh, we've had obviously had it here as well. OK, so you've seen it fall there already. So, you know, that's unattractive for long side investors. You know, that's unattractive for long side investors. And you're here again at the same place where it has previously been twice unattractive for long side investors. This is the utmost prime example of key price action rules. OK, because you've got one, two. So something's happening here. Something is happening here that is causing the price to fall. That's what you've got to get. So when you get there, why would you buy it? Just why? Yes, it could go higher. It could. But on probability, what is more likely? Where is the better deal? Is it short or is it long? Well, obviously, it's to the short side. Now, given you've got a bit of a hairy situation, you could make it light. And you have hit the area three times, you might say, some might say that there's potential because you keep hitting that area, you could go higher. Yeah, totally. So perhaps drop your risk. But this is absolutely not the time to buy because it's just too high up. And the value is there for short. Look how far off that your local 20 and 40 MA you are. Look how far off your 100 you are. Okay, you're flying away from it absolutely flying away from it. So if it becomes a case that you do have intervention and Japan's finance minister Suzuki is closely monitoring this going high because they don't want a weaker yen. They're sick of it. The yen is you know, breaking point weak. They don't want it any weaker. No, thank you. OK, so if it comes higher, you may find their stance continues to change. They already put rates up slightly. It did nothing because they're still 0% and they're fairly, they're quite accommodative to business because it's still 0%, still very low. Yes, it's not minus 0.1, but it is zero. It's not exactly a high rate. So the effect has done nothing because your rates in the US are staying supposedly until June at their rate, which is high. Okay, so three more months or so. And that's what traders are pricing in. Now, it's going sideways this week, 
because there's the confusion of whether Japan is going to do anything to, to subdue it or not, and whether that that hawkish uh, recent hawkish tone or the continued higher rates are going to keep the price supported to the upside. Okay, but nonetheless, it's a short. I absolutely don't want to buy yens. There's no way. I am still short on the Swiss franc yen. I am holding short on the Swiss franc yen. I pref if I had to short any of these, it would be the Swiss franc yen because this is where you're finding the biggest deviation. It's where you've had the biggest swing to the upside. But that is weak. That push up is weak. You've got the SMB easing. You've got these comments from the finance minister. If it if there is intervention and it goes whack like that, you know it's it, the situation is a lot better on this pair than it is on all the other yens because all the other yens have still got sustained much higher rates than the Swiss bank and the Swiss bank has already started dropping them. Okay, and their rate isn't terribly high anyway. Okay. So you've got the, some other yens coming down on their rhetoric. Um, I like the Swiss franc yen particularly. If I was going to short any other yen, it would need a push up. Okay, uh, that goes for basically all of them. But there is weakness here again. So across the board, my bias generally for yens is short, especially with the finance minister saying these kind of things. It's, uh, uh, it gives even more weight to that short side bias. And it would be absolutely brilliant if, of course, they do pile in buying those yens and it completely uh, diminishes the value of the other party against it.